and welcome to Pimento Fabi Farm. I'm your host, Jerry Hansen. I'm joined today by Jamie Watson. She is a student at Southern Oregon University. She's here to interview me uh, for one of her student projects. Jamie, go ahead and tell my audience what you're here for. Thank you, Jerry. So I'm here today for an um, assignment in my Emerging Media and Digital Arts class. Um, it's an audio assignment. We're learning how to edit and produce high quality sounding audio within a um, within Adobe. So for video production. So um, today I'm going to take portions of this interview and turn it into a 60 second interview for that class. But I also have the pleasure of being able to do an interview with you on your channel for YouTube. Um, and I'm excited to talk to your audience. So I'm excited to be here today. So Jamie, uh, let's go ahead and start your interview. All right. Great. Welcome to Pine Meadows Hobby Farm, a modern homestead. Today we will be interviewing Jerry Hansen, creator, director, and producer of the YouTube channel Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. Jerry's Easy Clean Chicken Coop was featured in the Spring 2015 edition of the Magazine of Modern Homesteading, Countryside, and Small Stock Journal. Thank you for joining me, Jerry. It's a pleasure being here, Jamie, and thank you for coming. So, tell me, what inspired you to begin sharing your ideas with others on YouTube? Looking through YouTube channels, uh, trying to find a video on how to do certain projects that I needed to learn to, there was a lot of information out there, but no videos that were cut precise information that was provided for doing any uh, specific job. Say, for instance, when I'm go in my Going Off the Grid series, uh, erecting the, the erecting a windmill. I saw plenty of videos on how uh, uh, putting up a windmill. That's all well and fine, but how the windmill get up there? So I produced a video on detailed installation uh, um, tutorials. So Jerry, notice you're a one man show, and most of these videos you're performing tasks that seems like one person really can't do it alone, and on top of that. You're filming and producing these these high quality videos. Um, have you always done that? I, you're just the king of do-it-yourselfer. Well, I thank you, Jamie, for the compliment about the quality <laughs> of the videos. Uh, as far as the video quality goes, uh, I have been working extra hard on uh, accumulating more uh, talent and giving my viewers something more pleasing to look at and also helping them uh, see the story that I'm trying to present and coming up with the different tasks that I have. All of my things that I'm presenting on YouTube are valuable money-saving tips. See, I live on a very tight budget. Buying my property on a tight budget, buying the house on a tight budget, building the barn, Everything about the hobby farm is either free material that I've been getting for nothing by going to estate cleanups and uh, helping people clean up and taking home what I can use on the farm, as well as just finding repurposed material and building things that I need in finding new life for old cast off junk and throwing a coat of paint on it and calling it good. So, do you ever just walk around the hobby farm and look at things and so you're looking at the materials that you have, you're looking at the projects, things that you need to be fixed, and do you kind of put them together, come up with things? Um, I do look at what I need mm -hmm. as far as, uh, you know, what, what needs to be done now. Uh, as far as livability goes, I do have my goals and uh, look to the future. The goal for Pine Meadows Hobby Farm is to become as self-reliant as possible by the time I retire in five years. Mm -hmm. And do it as cheaply as possible. 
So that is building the barn with recycled material, building a chicken coop with as much recycled material as they can, and getting in place all the livestock garden, orchard, and all the fundamental stuff needed for uh, on a farm to be able to become self-reliant in uh, providing food mm -hmm. for myself, my family, and maybe my neighbors. And also mm -hmm. is going off the grid series that I produced for Pine Meadows Hobby Farm, demonstrating how I am putting together solar panels. I'm developing a water wheel right now, utilizing one of the three streams that flow through the property, and generating free electricity and putting the windmill together. So, um, going off the grid series, what have you done so far in that series, and what do you have planned? When I was performing certain tasks here on the hobby farm, I was lacking information, so I went to YouTube to see if anybody else was uh, doing that. Mm -hmm. And they had some wonderful YouTube videos out there, for instance, uh, demonstrating how that they got a windmill and they put it up on a mast. Well, that's well and fine, but how did it get up on the mast? Mm -hmm. They didn't show that. So I was inspired to go ahead and uh, edit a video on a step-by-step -step procedure mm -hmm. on putting up a wind turbine. So during the process, when you started your hobby farm, you started getting on YouTube to see how to do things, and you noticed a lack of the details. Exactly. And so as you're out there trying to learn how to do these things yourself and, and going along the way, you realize other people must be doing the same thing. Other people are probably going onto YouTube trying to figure out how to be self-sufficient. Do it yourself. And just that information isn't as detailed as it should be. So you really did this because you wanted to help people out with that and kind of improve the information detail. I, I did, yes. Because if I was one that was going looking for information, particular information on YouTube and it was lacking, mm -hmm. then I would go ahead and build, uh, do it myself mm -hmm. and videotape myself doing it and providing a detailed, informative video to teach others. One of the uh, things that really caught my attention while looking at your channel was the windmill that you put up in your Off the Grid series. And in that video, you put up, what, a 24-foot windmill all by yourself? Uh, the windmill is actually 40, uh, I think it's 46 feet high. Each mat, e there's two poles there, each pole is 20 feet long. Uh, one pulls 20 foot, the other one is 24 foot, so it's 44 feet tall. Oh my. Yes, and that was the first project I did where I implemented videotaping with two cameras because mm -hmm. I was blessed to get a second camera. My son got rid of a camera and actually gave it to my wife, so I borrowed it from my wife and was mm -hmm. able to do a wide angle shot and do the other shot with my other little camera I had and actually installed it on the mast so and I, I also got creative with some free software that I found online mm -hmm. available from Microsoft. So not only are you figuring out how to you know do a homestead on a budget you're figuring out how to produce with with the things that you have produce uh, higher and higher quality video. That is correct all my cameras I have now I, I didn't pay a cent for them I got them free uh, all of my software I have, I, it's, it's available for free. You just have to learn how to use it. Mm -hmm. So, one of the themes that I've kind of noticed on your channel is kind of the, you know, you just have that independence really put in there and that you can do it yourself and work with what you have and it just seems really encouraging to people who may feel like they're alone and they can't do it and then they watch you running around the farm with the camera doing all these crazy things and and I think it inspires them going wow maybe I can do it too I mean he's giving me step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it so um, what kind of comments have you gotten from your followers on your YouTube channel? You have about, what, 770 going on 800 subscribers to your channel now? I do. Uh, it seems like it's growing exponentially now. 
Uh, to some, that seems like a small number, but to me, that is my milestone. <laughs> uh, it's just, apparently, there is a, uh, a core group of people worldwide, because my videos are viewed all over the world, that are interested in self-reliance mm -hmm. and self-sustaining lifestyle and not dependent so much on commercialism. Mm -hmm. And that's where I am, because I live on a tight budget. I can't afford to go out and buy things. I have to either grow my own stuff, raise my own animals to and you know butcher my own livestock to fill my freezer and put on my dinner table. Uh, I the thesis for Pine Meadows Hobby Farm is to become self-reliant on a tight budget. And my goal is to have the hobby farm completely self-sufficient and self-reliant by the time I retire in five years. And so from the beginning of starting your your homestead until retirement, that's a period of less than 10 years that you'll be self-sufficient, paid off, off the grid, and living the dream. That is, that is quite the uh, achievement uh, for someone who is actually coming out of uh, four years of being homeless to being where we are, we've made uh, I, we've made milestones coming from homelessness for four years and coming to this point uh, in our lives to where we actually are purchasing property and we own the home. I don't owe a cent on the house; I have the title on it. The property we par uh, we purchased creatively without a bank mortgage. I don't owe the bank a cent for the property. We were able to purchase it from a land auction from the county for uh, back taxes. And so I, like you mentioned, uh, one of the comments from my subscribers that I get, one mm -hmm. subscriber who was watching my uh, building a homestead on a tight budget uh, he commented that he did exactly the same thing. He was able mm -hmm. to find the same uh, uh, property that I got, and he was sharing his story with me. And I find that very inspiring, that there are deals out there. You just have to be patient, you have to look for them, and you have to be creative. Jerry, thank you so much for agreeing to meet with me today. It's been wonderful learning all about uh, your activities here on Pine Meadows Hobby Farm, and I look forward to seeing what you have coming up in the future. Well, thank you, Jamie. It's a pleasure talking to you, too, and I wish you luck on your class project. It was a pleasure participating in this interview from a Southern Oregon University student, Jamie Watson. Uh, I want to thank you, my subscribers, for tuning in to Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. I'm your host, Jerry Hansen. And please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and leave a comment. And look forward to some new adventures coming your way here at Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. Come back again. Bye-bye.